Hey, what's up, guys? This is my LFO Tool course. We're going to be going over all the aspects of LFO Tool. Uh, LFO Tool is a host, syncable, and free-running modulation device. You work with things called graphs, and you route these, the LFOs, to different parameters on the side here. In this video, we're going to be going over the UI, the user interface. It's pretty straightforward. We have our graph section here. We draw in our graphs, and we have our rate down here, swing and phase, we can change it around and adjust them. We have graph pages, 1 through 12, and what that does is you can use your MIDI keyboard to jump around between different modulations, so good for dubstep. Over to the left here, we have a filter, so it's kind of a, an esoteric under the hood aspect that not a lot of people know about is there's a lot of different filters. It's an excellent filter tool uh, with drive and uh, different comb filters. So when you pump the resonance up, you can do some really interesting kind of spongle effects. Uh, and there's even some interesting ones like format, which we'll get into, and reverb, which takes an impulse response and applies that to a filter, which is pretty cool. Uh, you have your MIDI section here, which we'll probably get into. Uh, scope, which we'll get into, and uh, our routing here. So each page can be routed to a different parameter. For example, cutoff or volume, and uh, that's how the auto filter or sidechain compression works. Uh, we can split it with a crossover, so you get multiband compression. So say if you only wanted to kind of duck the the low end but leave the high end for your compression or your side chain compression, you can do that. Uh, you have your different shapes, uh, your drop downs here, drop down. So you can have side chain one, side chain two, and you can of course save these. And uh, yeah, that is the intro and UI for LFO tool. What's up guys, we're back and we're gonna be going over the LFO shape, curves and snapping. So right now we have a bass and a kick and we want to side chain the bass to the kick so LFO tool is perfect for this we just drop it in and what that does is that is ducking because this is the shape is opening the volume right so right now the volume is being routed and we can adjust the shape by pulling the white points Right, so without that, right, and we can drag it about. All right, so we get more of a pumping effect. So I want to go over uh, drawing in shapes. So you can kind of uh, bring shapes about. Uh, side, you can try different side chain shapes. One's more smooth, uh, and the, like the side chain one. This is our first one. You can adjust your own, or you can make your own by moving it around. Uh, you can snap it to the grid by holding Alt, and you can snap it to your grid here. So you want it to be kind of like a perfect ramp. You can adjust it that way, and you can change the grid to, say, 2. You can do it that way, right? So it's kind of perfectly symmetrical via your grid. right? You can add or delete points by double-clicking on them. Double-clicking on the white points will delete them. Double-clicking anywhere else on the line will add them. So we'll, we'll bring more of a grid here. And you can add quite a bit of um, you can add quite a bit of points and you can just go crazy right you can change these around you can go to another page so we'll change the modulation to two alright so we have an upwards kind of saw here no we'll go like this We'll change the rate to one eighths. 
All right, we're doing that. We can change the shape by clicking on here. We can make it curved. You can make it a little less intense as well. All right, and you can change the shape of any connecting tissue and uh, all that. And uh, yeah, that is your LFO shapes. If you want to say a sine wave, you can do it this way. You can even take a point and make it like that. You can create some sort of weird thingy and do all sorts of fun stuff that way. And uh, yeah, that's it. I uh, hope you learned stuff and take care and have a good one. Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, we're going to be going over rate, swing, phase, pulse width modulation, and smoothing. So we have a white noise signal to uh, illustrate what we're trying to do here. We'll load this in, and you can really hear what it's doing now. It's adding that side chain pumping effect. All right. So what I'm going to do is add in using our snap. Add in a square wave. Right. So we can adjust the rate here. We can anchor it uh, so it's syncable to host or not to host. So right now it's free running, and it's very very free and you can have it all the way up in the FM range which is fast right. we'll have it synced and we'll uh, get rid of triplet and dotted so right now we only have uh, rhythmic right so 16 all the way to uh, 128 uh, one of a yeah pretty fast so we'll go 1 8th Right, and that is our rate. We can swing this. Right, so we can have it kind of swing uh, with the tempo. We can add swing to it, which is pretty useful for different filter effects, uh, which we will get into. Uh, another thing you can do is you can reset these to zero by holding uh, control and clicking on them. They go back to zero. Phase will change the phase, so it'll kind of move it over so that blue part. We'll do that and uh, pulse width modulation. This will change the pulse width, much like you know you would expect for a square wave, but for more complex, more complex uh, shapes, you can drastically change the sound. Right, it kind of bends it, and it can do some really neat things. Smoothing smooths out. So say if you have, I'll show you, we'll go flat, right? I'll make it really like that, and I'll do that, All right? We can s set it to smooth so it doesn't like click. it smooths out the LFO, which is useful. And I'll show you. So say if we have this right here, this right here. Hear that click? We can smooth it out with this. Or what I like to do is I like to kind of do this. So we can have them all together. We have that pumping effect. All right. Uh, that is all of our LFO options down there. We can turn this off. So yeah, if we turn them off, uh, it goes in hertz. So we can have it 0 0.0001, 001, I mean, hertz. So it's very, very slow, all the way up to like almost one hertz. So it's one time a second. And you can anchor it to your host. 
all the way up to a lot of times a second. Well, well, well into the frequency range. So, yeah. 44,000 times a second. Four, no, 440,000 times a second. That exceeds the FM range. And, uh, yeah, that is that video. Hope you learned stuff, and take care, and have a good one. Here's up, guys. In this video, we're going to be going over the filter sections of LFO Tool. Now, the filter section is engaged by clicking this little on button here. So we will uh, set the basic shape to flat and uh, control click the volume so nothing's being modulated right now. We can engage the filter and mouse over the drop down menu and we'll see that we now have filter and our graph will change the filter to make it change back we mouse over any of these and it'll go back and we mouse over the filter it goes back so whatever you hover over uh, will be context sensitive we have cutoff resonance mix blank and drive uh, some filters do not have drive uh, I'll give you an example the low has drive and you can really drive a signal with resonance you can mix it wet dry and uh, it does some really cool stuff. It can turn into interesting bandpass filters. And uh, it can do all sorts of weird stuff. Uh, so you have the, the typical normal, which is like typical filters, bandpass, uh, band reject, uh, high pass, low pass. You have multi filters. These are multi mode filters. These are different filters that kind of are more than one filter and they do really weird things uh, they're kind of like format filters but different um, yeah it's, a, it's beyond the scope oh, what the hell was that that was weird it's beyond the scope of this video that's never happened before and uh, yeah they're just different filters we have uh, flanges. These are comb filters. So what they do is, I'll give you a better example. These can all be modulated, which is exciting. Uh, we'll go flange. We'll go comb. We'll engage. So what this does is this is just a bunch of filters, or not a bunch of filters. Think of it as you're taking each little point in time and delaying it by a small amount. So this is how you get like that gritty kind of bass. You can do all sorts of fun stuff with that. There's comb filters, positive and negative, and there's different kinds of flanges. Think of it as different combinations of filters, and that's what we're looking at here. And yeah, there's just a lot of filters going on here. One of my favorites is we have, of course, comb, which is very aggressive. You have the impulse response of a reverb. And you get some really gritty, kind of overdriven sounds with this. Uh, hard to explain what it does, but I believe it's the impulse response from a particular reverb. Uh, and of course, format uh, uh, low, mid, and high. And what these are, these are multiple um, bandpass filters that act as talking bass, kind of. Right, and you can cycle through them like so you can switch it up right so if you're into that sort of thing you might be and uh yeah that's pretty much the filter section a lot of filters and this is like an overlooked aspect of lfo tool it's a it's an exceptional filter machine as well as a ducking machine 
kind of thing. Uh, there's just a lot going on here. And uh, yeah, even ring mod, which is kind of crazy. Uh, yeah, uh, hope you learned stuff and uh, take care and have a good one. Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, we're going to be going over routing in LFO tool. You have your routing section here. You can route a number of things cutoff, resonance, volume, pan, and a variable uh, routing uh, option here, which is sensitive to depending on what kind of filter you have selected. So we'll get into that. All right, so we can route our volume and that's what it is by default right now it's being routed L uh, graph one is being routed all right so right now we have a pumping sidechain effect so what we'll do is we will shift click set it back to zero so right now nothing's going on we can set this into the negative or into the positive right you can do all sorts of fun things so i want graph two to be routed to the cutoff and we'll engage the filter here right so right now the filter is not doing anything so we will increase the value here All right so right now the filter's kind of going back and forth as a triangle All right we can select a shape we'll go sign And we'll set the intensity to that. The resonance, so you can hear it. All right, and you have that, and uh, that works quite well. We can have the resonance. We can leave the resonance. Oops, Windows. You can have it so just the resonance is being changed by the shape here. or both right? or all three of the volume so what we'll do is we'll map the volume to two or the resonance to two and the volume to one so we get that pumping effect we'll increase the amount We'll have uh, an auto panned three. All right, you can see these little dots here. That is what the value is changing. All right, so you can do all sorts of fun stuff that way. I want to show you the variable. So there's this variable option here. Right, right now it's flat. We'll draw in something interesting here. And uh, right now the variable is at zero. What this is, is certain filters. So we'll go multi-filter. So this is a multi-stage filter. Um, there's two kind of cutoff points, right? You'll see cutoff here and a cutoff here. All right, and we'll slow that down. All right, so you have one cutoff point and then another cutoff point. All right, so we can have independent routing between two cutoffs. And you can do all sorts of fun stuff with that. Really it makes a difference with the, the comb filter, what that does. Wait, oh, that's not doing anything. The actual flange no nope, that's not doing anything either where's the one that does the format oh yeah this will change it up a bit all right so you can have that being changed by that So it's all kind of independent routing and the depth this is a global depth so at zero basically nothing is going on right, we can set the rate to and do all sorts of fun stuff with that 
not the greatest example, but you kind of understand what's going on. Uh, different parameters being mapped to different graphs or LFOs. I call them graphs because they're not quite LFOs. You draw them in, so they are graphs. Anyway, hope you learned stuff, and uh, yeah, have a good one. Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, we're going to go over managing shapes. You can draw in any kind of shape you desire, and then you can save them. So we're going to talk about saving and loading. So we're going to click Save, because I like the shape for some reason. And uh, you'll go to My Documents, Xfer, and uh, you'll go into LFO Tool Presets. Um, you have all of your preset folders here, but then you have Shapes. You want to go to Shapes, and then you'll create something new. You'd be like a uh, user, and you'll open that, and you'll go Sadox awesome shape of doom save that bam user sidewalks awesome shape of doom and then you'll have that kind of forever uh, and if you you can kind of just draw them in go here and then this will be my awesome kind of side chainy thing of doom and this will be, you know, here forever, and the shapes will always be here for me, right? So with that being said, you can create a shape and copy it and paste it to another graph with uh, your copy and paste here. So you can paste, paste, and you can go here, copy, paste, and you can copy and paste your heart to your heart's content, and uh, that is basically... Uh, managing shapes and uh, yeah you can share them with your friends online and have all your fun shapes that way all right take care and have a good one hey what's up guys in this video we're going to be going over the split feature in LFO tool so we have our piece of audio here right. so we'll drop in LFO tool bring it down Right now it's pumping so there's a split feature down here so what this does is this affects um, only a certain band so LFO tool will only affect the lower frequencies or if you click on this the higher frequencies and you can hear that now right, so right now the higher frequencies are being ducked and right now the lower frequencies are being ducked now this is useful for side chaining material that has a lot of bass and some high end it's a little bit too intense. We'll bring the depth down. Right? So you can hear that. And what that's doing is that's kind of cleaning up and letting the low end get ducked, but leaving the high end. And this is uh, kind of akin to multiband uh, sidechain compression. And it's really useful. Uh, for a lot of material and to make your mix sound quite nice and that's pretty much it um, it's a new feature it was implemented and uh, it's pretty fun all right uh, take care and hope you learn stuff hey what's up guys in this video we're going to be going over offset scope and working with latency all right so we have our piece of audio here all right, we got some clickage going on there and how you fix that is, well, what it's caused by is we have this little piece of audio poking through and it's causing it to click. So we can just move this over. And there's no more clicking, right? And we can see that here. So we're going to turn on the scope. And what this is, is the scope works how uh, you'd expect it to. It's uh, an oscilloscope that takes a picture. So the faded uh, signal you see is the original signal and the colored signal or the, I guess that would be pink, is the, the signal that's uh, wet, that's coming out of LFO tool. Right, so you'll see little clicks coming through there. All right. When we do that, we can completely get rid of all of it. 
and we can see exactly what we're affecting. All right, so uh, that is the scope. Let's work with some latency. So what we'll do is we'll drop in. We'll drop in some Pro Q. Oops. We will try that again. We'll drop in Pro Q and then we'll drop in LFO tool. And we'll add some high latency. So right now, it sounds all effed up basically, and that's not good. And uh, if we turn on the metronome, we can hear that it's not sounding right. Right, and that's not good. So we'll turn on the scope, and we'll see that this is supposed to be over here. So we can turn on the offset and kind of bring it back to where it needs to be. Right, and uh, that is how we compensate the latency from latency-inducing plugins uh, when they're not compensated, and that's with the offset. All right, hope you learned stuff. Take care, and have a good one.